Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, March 23, 2022. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? There's a lot on the docket. I want to go through a number of things that are going to explain not only the daily chart, the weekly chart, my thought process going forward, where the market is, where it's going next, and what's likely to happen after that. How do you like them apples? Strap in, put your seatbelt on, get a drink, let's roll. The first thing we do is take an assessment of the daily chart. What's going on? What's jumping off the page? Where are we? So the market ran up, and by the way, once again for the second time, the market put in a high, at least for the interim, on time. Now, I thought they would get to the 450-150. Frankly, here's what I thought was going to happen. I thought they were going to get to the 450-150. I had my reasons. I thought they would spike it a little bit. I thought they would finish either down on the day or put in some kind of a sign or signal of a trend change. They didn't do any of that stuff, but that was my thought process on the 450-150. Now, it's off the table. We don't need it anymore. When they go back up, if they go back up, it may be from an intraday perspective, some overhead resistance, it's still an important spot, but it's not the same as I thought it was before or as it would have been yesterday had they hit it. The concept was I was always going to be looking for a pullback. I thought they would go a little higher first. We talked about this. So now let's talk about the pullback and what's going on and what's the next likely scenario. And then the question comes up, and it's obviously going to come up sooner than later. So let me get the elephant out of the room early. Why didn't you short the market up there yesterday? Because I was waiting for 451.50. That was my number. Maybe I was stingy about it. But yes, the market was on time, and there were some traders that did take a short trade yesterday. They emailed me ahead of time. They emailed me after the fact. All that stuff, and that's fine. But I want to give you just a piece of evidence or an item why I might be looking a little higher, why I wasn't so anxious to run into a short trade. Here's the weekly chart. So what we have is a reversal week last week. They closed above the candle high, this candle here ending 225.22. That's the week ending. So the market put in that tail candle The market now put in a reversal candle that closed above the high of that tail candle, closed above the 50 period, moving average, all that stuff. We talked about that. So here's the thing. So I'm looking at it saying, what would prevent the market from just continuing to go up now that it put in a reversal candle? Would that be out of the question for them to go up farther into and farther than the 20 period moving average, maybe get back up to this 460 area breakdown candle high. Why couldn't that happen? And the funny thing is, as soon as I thought that to myself, I look back at the last time the market really had a reversal of sorts. It came in to run a test of the 20 period moving average. And yes, the market was in an uptrend at the time. That's a different scenario. But look what happened. The market reversed and it just didn't look back. Now that certainly was possible. Maybe it is possible into the end of this week. It's only Wednesday. We don't know that. But that's some of the things that were on my mind. And you can find other scenarios where there was minimal pullback after the market reversed on the weekly chart. So I thought to myself, well, I don't necessarily need to take or want to take a chance with a short trade immediately following a reversal. And that was kind of the concept. It was really erring on the side of caution. Why do I tell you all this? Because I want you to understand what's inside my head. Not every price, not every market, not every chart is always the same based on current market conditions. You have to take a lot of different things into account. On the daily chart, why couldn't they get to my 450-150? Why couldn't they get to the 100 period moving average up at 453, 454 area? They could have, they just haven't yet. All right, so now let's go forward. And let's talk about what's next, what's likely going to happen. So they filled the gap. And by the way, what's interesting is today was almost like a mirror image of yesterday. 
Daily chart yesterday gapped up and finished not at the highs, but near the highs. Today, gapped down and finished pretty much on the lows. And if you look at an intraday, here's a 10-minute chart. You can see yesterday, the market basically gapped up and went sideways to higher all day long. Today, the market gapped down and went sideways to lower most of the day. Talk about market symmetry. So what happens from here? Well, the door is open for the 50-period moving average. The 50-period moving average is around the big fat round number, give or take, 440.97. It'll be slightly lower tomorrow as it's trending a little bit lower. But that's a guideline. That's not necessarily the number that I would expect the market to, A, reach on a target basis, and then, B, turn right around and go back in the other direction. There's other stuff going on in between. What happens if we look at a 240 chart? Is there anything different or is there anything confirmatory on this page? Well, there is. The 100 period moving average comes in right around that same price. We'll call it 440 to 441 area. There happens to be a breakup candle low, 441.19. So you see where I'm going with this. 441, 440. Garden variety retracement, slightly above that level. Let's say they come into the garden variety retracement. They spike it a little bit. Ah, they're into that level. So now you have another reason. You see how we begin to build a full stack of items that may warrant support and an important area for the market. We're doing it in real time. 120 minute chart. The 200 period moving average at 441. More evidence to support the case that 441 down to 440, which is also magnetic and a big fat round number, will be a zone of support. And what if, what if they just blow through 440? What's the next safety net or number down? How about 439? Put it on a sticky note, and it's not just because it's the next number down. Here's the hourly chart. What's here? How about the 50 period moving average at where? 438.79. Sound familiar? Sound pretty close to 439. And then if I add a give or take, a spike of 439 brings you to what? The 50 period moving average. That'll be slightly higher tomorrow. You see where I'm going with this? Now watch this. So now we've identified a zone, 441 down to a spike of 439, right around 438.75. So now we have a zone. And now I want to look at the market or this chart with that zone identified. So here's your 50 period moving average. And what's also interesting is something else drew my eye in. So all of a sudden, we have this thing that happened at 441. You see where the market ran up to 441 and was rejected just a little bit, down a few bucks. But that's still a rejection. Even if it's on an intraday basis, it tells me that number was important. So what happened? Well, let's check out what happened. What the market did was it ran up to 441, pulled back, did a little bit of a two-step, a little bit of a shimmy, shimmy, and then it broke out above that area. Again, this is a short-term look at this chart, but using these numbers that we identified for a different reason. So here the market ran up and it came back down over here to retest 441, then it went up. So on the next run back, is 441 going to be support? Maybe it will be. Or if they bust through, where would they go? Well, we've got the other side of that range. You see where these numbers come from? This is not magic. This is not some kind of voodoo. There's no crystal ball involved, no swamis. That's the zone we're going with for tomorrow. Now, if they gap down below 438.75, it's back to the drawing board. Inside the number members, we'll have the numbers below 438.75. I already have them. 437.22 is an important number. Put that on a sticky note. Inside the numbers was pretty much a bust today. I had to be out in the morning. I did make some commentary this afternoon. There was no stocks on the move today. But nevertheless, we put the stuff on the board, so let's review it for what it is. That's what I like to do each and every day. It memorializes everything we're talking about. So I got back after lunch, and I noticed there's a pivot going on. 447.50 was the pivot. If they get above the pivot, they're going to run for 449 and maybe 450 again. If they stay below the pivot, they're looking at the gap and lower. So that was basically the crux of the thing. 
And in between number was 445.64, which was the morning low. So write that stuff down on a sticky note. And by the way, let's just scroll up and see what else we've got. It's more of the same. They're all the same numbers. It's all the same thing. It's all the same men, whatever that thing is. Here's a five-minute chart. Right at the vertical is today's activity. So here's the situation. 447.50 is the pivot. If they can stay above, they're going to go fill the gap up here and do some other stuff. If they can't and they trade below and they stay below, which means closing candles below, which just means time. The more time they spend below a number, the larger the door becomes or the doorway becomes for them to go get the next number in that direction. In this case, the southern direction. So 444.44 was a gap. They come up short. They bounce away. They do that kind of stuff all the time, specifically in an afternoon in a very quiet day. And even though today the market was down a pretty good number, the market was rather quiet all day. It was more like a slow bleed than anything else. So everybody and their brothers looking for the gap. They want to take a trade at the gap. They're either short getting to the gap or they're looking to buy the gap. So they do neither. They come up short of the gap and they bounce away, screwing two different factions of traders. We've seen this many, many times. And you know that's true because each and every time I see it or at least identify it, we talk about it. Then into the end of the day, they fill the gap and proceed lower, which is a pretty good indication the destination is still south of where today's closing price was, which is why I talked about the downside when we were on the daily chart. Speaking of which, back to the daily chart, what happens if it's just a one-day wonder and they bounce back up? What's the number that begins to get the bulls excited again? The one that begins to light the match for another leg higher. And it's really beginning at 446. They have to close candles above 446, really puts them back in a super bullish position, if you will. By the way, here's what I'm looking for. We don't know what's going to happen. What I think is coming is maybe another day down or two days down into this zone, find some support in and around this zone somewhere, and then have another leg higher, challenge the highs, and then run into the 100 period moving average and challenge these highs and potentially beyond into 460 or this neighborhood. That's actually what I'm looking for over the next several trading sessions, maybe week or so. Could that hold true, but we get some kind of a deeper pullback to 435 or something in that neighborhood? Absolutely, that really wouldn't change the picture much. But the weekly closes will be important. If the weekly close closes back down in a bad position or an ominous position, like back down here, 425, 426, something like that. Now, that's not necessarily going to be lights out for the market, but that's certainly not a good position for them to be in. That would be the makings of a failure. The bulls are looking for this reversal week to hold for at least another week or two or more. The bears are looking for the failure back down below, at least for starters, the big fat round number of 440. What's going on over in camp IWM? It's all the same market. IWM's pulling back. Was down much more than the SPY. We will note that. The SPY was down about one and point something percent today, and the IWM was down, whether it was down this at the close or not, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it's pretty close to the close, 1.8, 1.7% today. My favorite market leading indicator, which is why I bring this up. It's likely headed into those moving averages. 200 to 201 should be garden variety of chart support. Some back of the napkin math, 250 is actually the spot. Now, that's not to say they won't get to and spike through 200 on the downside, but the number that actually comes off the napkin is 200.50. Now, let's just use this as a lesson, just using this particular chart. We could use other charts. It's not a big deal. You have a low, you have a higher low, and let's just say it comes down into this zone. Maybe a potential higher low, some market symmetry, another leg higher. That is a possibility. This is not a bearish thing going on right now. It could turn into one, but today it's not. It's just a pullback in an existing uptrend now. The bear case from a weekly perspective is that this is just a bounce and a downtrend, and what's going to happen is this bear flag pattern is just going to play out like this and take the market much lower. That's the bear case. The bull case for now is 
They want to run a better test up here to the breakdown candle high, and what happens if they close above it on a week? We have a whole different thing going on. So that's what's going on from a weekly perspective in the IWM. Day-to-day -day doesn't necessarily tell you the picture. Week-to-week -week tells you a better picture. What's going on with the folks down at the transportation department? So they didn't get to this 16, eight and a quarter yet. That's a gap that'll be filled eventually. So what are they doing now? Well, now they could be in some kind of a wedge pattern, a bull flag pattern. All they're doing is eating time off the clock. It's a down day, but you need to put this kind of a down day where yeah, it was 300 points, but you need to put it in perspective. Look where they were just a few days ago they had this enormous rocket ride higher, and they're just in a pullback kind of formation. Again, this is the way the market works. It's normal garden variety market behavior. How do we know that? Because every time the market goes up, it pulls back. Every time the market goes down, it bounces back up. So here's the point. Market's up here, tops out, goes down here, bounces up. Market bounces down here, bounces back up, pulls back, goes back. That's what's happening. So the market went all the way up to here. It's going to pull back to somewhere, whether it's here or here or here. doesn't really matter today. What matters from a big picture perspective is what are the transports doing? Are they healthy? Are they giving us an indication of what the rest of the market either is or might be doing in the short, intermediate, or longer term? That's the reason we look at the transports on a regular basis not necessarily looking to trade them day in and day out. I'm looking to use them as part of my tools in the tool belt. The folks out in Silicon Valley, the Q people, so they didn't get to my number yesterday either, just like the SPY, same routine, but it's just a pullback. In fact, today was basically an inside day to yesterday in the Qs. That means the high today was inside the high of yesterday, the low today was inside the low of yesterday, that's by definition an inside day. Doesn't tell us anything other than the market may be beginning to eat time off the clock. So we may see another few more days of back and forth type of activity slash price action slash behavior. That's my first spot of interest if they're killing the tape and killing the cues on Thursday. Actually, I take that back. 349, give or take, is actually the first spot of interest, but this one is really a much, much better spot. Put that on a sticky note. Pretty decent down day for the financial sector. It's all the same market. It's a pullback until it morphs or develops into something else. 38 and a half, 38, 35, that's a pretty good spot in the XLF. I'd put that one on a sticky note also. Smash Mouth, all the same market. Everything looks identically the same. Not necessarily to the same magnitude, but the same routine, same chart. Not all of them, they're in the same position. We're not calling the SMH or Smash Mouth an uptrend. And we still have a series of lower highs in other markets, don't get me wrong, and don't get the wrong impression what I'm about to say. But what we're doing here is using this chart as an example. We're making an example out of Smash Mouth. Here's the highs up here, lower high, lower high. Do we have a lower high working and this is really what's going on? Again, these are awareness things, not to say that this isn't going to do the same thing we just described and have one more leg higher. I still believe that's the case, but you have to be the umpire looking at balls and strikes and saying, hey, if in fact SMH and other markets start getting below certain stuff, we're going to come back over here and we're going to say, hey, this is like a canary in the coal mine. This thing's not doing well. This thing could be in big trouble. But we have to have the big picture in mind also. So I look at Smash Mouth and I say, from a monthly chart perspective, we have to be aware that they came in, they ran a test of the 20-period moving average, they did a pretty good bounce away from that moving average. That's normal garden variety behavior. It's still in an uptrend. So the long-term trend on the SMH is still higher. Depends on how you define long-term trend. Not so much in the weekly chart. The weekly chart is teetering on uptrend versus downtrend. The weekly 50 period moving average is important. We talked about this before. Some of you don't necessarily believe that, that's fine. Everybody is entitled to believe whatever they want. That's what makes a market. I don't have the patent on right information. I have the way I look at things and I'm here to convey that to you 
then you can take whatever you want to take out of it and use that to your advantage. Last week was a weekly chart reversal candle. The fact that we're getting a pullback today doesn't change the monthly chart, doesn't change what happened last week. It's a pullback. If they get below last week's low and close the week below that, all bets are off. Open the floodgates, open the trap door, put the women and children to bed. There's going to be blood in the streets. But for now, it's a pullback. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.